there's just a lot of good volleyball going on. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. And uh, Z and I were talking about like potential player of the years. And I feel like typically there's a standout where you're like, oh, so clear. It's like not that clear this year by any means. Agreed? It's not. And I, I think I have some ideas on who it could be, but I think most times how it works is it's best player on best team. And there's only one team in the country that hasn't lost yet. But that team is made up of a bunch of best players. And so. What's up, everybody? If you are a college football fan like me, if you know a college football fan that's in your life, you need to go cop this shirt. New designs dropping all the time. It's the perfect gift with the holiday season coming around. If you don't have this thing, you're missing out. Great material, great fabric. I wear it all the time. Go get yours today. What up, it girls and boys? Uh, welcome back to another episode of It Girls um, featuring the stories of winning women. And today you have the most of all winning women, a Johnny Taylor. <laughs> that's, that's so annoying. I didn't know she was going to do that, guys. I did not tell her to do that. No, she this told is... me to do the intro, and I said I would gladly do the intro, but she didn't know that was going to come. That's annoying. Well, I know. tell us what we got going on today, man. Guys, I'm so excited. So we're trying to like think of just ways to like refresh the It Girls brand and come up with like new ideas that make us excited about what we're doing going forward. And so we thought that it would be cool if we released episodes more often. Um, and we're going to aim for weekly, right, Taylor? We're going to aim for weekly, which is going to be awesome. And um, in order to do so, we're thinking we're going to do like two guests a month. But then on the alternate weeks, we're going to do either um, duo episodes with just a Johnny and I or solo episodes where Z and I can kind of pour our hearts out. That was pretty good. Because <laughs> I'm the song or did you just make that up? I just made that up. Yeah. But did it sound like an actual song? No. Oh. Okay. But, guys, so something that's been, that Z has been loving lately is Spindrift. What flavor Johnny, do you have? I have, I have mango orange. Oh, I never had that flavor. Okay. So, we thought of a cool idea. It's a Saturday night and we're not drinking alcohol. Instead, we're drinking crack it. <laughs> Spin drift on ice. <laughs> yeah, it's all, all poured in the glass. Here, Z. To our first episode. Oh. This is not our first episode. The straw. No, it's not. Um, no, but actually, we um, are so excited about this. We have a couple like really fun things to talk about. Um, obviously we're besties and this is just like catching up with, uh, catching up with my bestie. So Taylor, what do you want to start off with? I don't know. I think there's a lot of really interesting things going on in the world of women's sports today. And I think, I think the first thing that I want to talk about, cause I think it's right up my alley and it's about that time of year is just the college volleyball madness. We saw number four Louisville get taken down by number seven pit today and five two teams that we've both lost to. And I honestly, we were talking in the training room this morning. We were like, which team do we want to win? And for you guys, like there's so much that goes into like who goes where for tournament play and stuff. And we were all like, man, we think we want Louisville to win because if Louisville's a four seed, we'll go to Louisville instead of having to fly all the way across the country at Stanford. And we don't really want to play Nebraska. We're not sure where Wisconsin falls in that. And so it's really interesting. Um, Georgia Tech lost to Miami and there's a bunch of upsets and it's just, it's a really fun time of year for volleyball. And you know a lot about that. So. Yeah, I would hope so. Uh, Purdue beat Wisconsin too. That you didn't there say that, is. did you? I didn't say that. Um, yeah, it's fun. I my sister plays Marquette, obviously, so I was watching her team play tonight, and um, there's just a lot of good volleyball going on. I'm I'm excited to see what happens. And uh, Z and I were talking about like potential player of the years, and I feel like typically there's a standout where you're like, oh so clear it's like not that clear this year by any means agreed it's not and i i think i have some ideas on who it could be but 
I think most times how it works is it's best player on best team. And there's only one team in the country that hasn't lost yet, but that team is made up of a bunch of best players. And so I don't know what that's going to look like. I think Kendall Kip at Stanford could be a good look for it. Mm. I think, uh, Sarah Franklin could also be a good look. I don't know. It's going to be really interesting, but I think the wild card and who I think will probably at the end of the day, not win it because of how this thing works is Lexi Rodriguez, libero at Nebraska. And uh, libero has never won this award, at least not as far as I know. What's up sports fans? It's former NFL wide receiver, Stevie Johnson. The wait is finally over. FanDuel, America's number one sports book is now live in Kentucky. And new customers can get in on the action when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash Mercury. Finally, you can bet on your favorite sports from the money line to point spreads to play player props and more. This means you'll be able to place all kinds of bets, even live bets. Say you just have a feeling your favorite wide receiver in college football is going to get loose in the final minutes. Go ahead and live bet for him to score on the next drive. I promise you won't regret it. So start betting now on the app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Visit FanDuel.com slash Mercury and make every moment more. Must be 21 and up in present in Kentucky. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets which expire seven days after receipt restrictions apply see terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER yeah do you know that i was gonna tell you that you should fact i'll fact check i, it. You I will talking. fact check that but um, i'll fact check it i'm not sure libero's ever won player of the year but uh she's best player on best team thus far and so it'll be really interesting to see how that goes for sure for sure i'm looking at has libero ever won player of the year um in the meantime Tell us how you're doing. You're old and you're still playing volleyball. So how's your body holding up? How is your mental holding up? How is the team? Like Kentucky's on a freaking roll. For those of you that don't know, if you don't know, shame on you. But Kentucky's doing amazing. So Z, how are you doing? She said she just said that I'm old and still playing volleyball. For you are old. There, there are people older than me that are still playing no, fact. There are sixth years and seventh years somewhere out there. I don't know any of them, but <laughs> they're somewhere out there. God bless them. Um, I'm doing well. I think once you start to realize and feel that it's almost over, the mindset kind of shifts. Like I am have a guaranteed like three more games to wear this jersey. And so I um definitely playing with more gratitude and winning helps and to play with uh joy and happiness and that helps but um i don't know this five years have been incredible and so it's sad to know that it's coming to an end but it makes it a lot easier to play when you know that how big of a blessing it is wow not me tearing up right now <laughs> you all yeah that's crazy um holy crap this is but, actually like monumental yeah no it's crazy guys i don't really do this that often but um yeah okay. kentucky's on a roll we have Mizzou tomorrow, and well, I guess by the time you guys hear this, we will have hopefully beaten the Mizzou, and they're on a roll, they're on a win streak, trying to make the tournament, and so it'll be a big win for them if they beat us, and so we're not trying to let that happen. And then we go to Arkansas, and Arkansas is one win away from sharing a title with us, and so it's going to be a big matchup there. This is probably the best season they've ever had in their program history. And then we have Florida on senior night next Saturday to end things, and it doesn't matter really how good Florida ever is. It's one of those games where it's like, because it's just Florida and Kentucky, it's going to go either way. And so always fun to play in that matchup. But um, things are good. Mental is good. I'm grateful. And so, yeah, ready to oh. go. Wow, I can't believe you teared up. That was, that was really unexpected. <laughs> Next weekend's going to be tough. Like yeah. senior night round two will be really tough. Yeah, um, I like I'm not doing the full senior night thing this year just because like I already did it and I made that clear last year. So last year I was my senior year, but I like did everything because I wanted to do it in memorial with Mad with all those people that I'd been in college with. And so I did the whole jersey thing. My family was on the court and this year I just like told everyone that to make sure like I don't want it to be a big deal because I think the seniors this year deserve their time to do that. And so It'll be different, but it'll be really sad, so. I know. I know. I wish I could be there. It's just tough. Like, it's Thanksgiving. Obviously, we talked about this, but um, well, it's good at Thanksgiving because everyone's, like, families can be there that, you know, have senior night, but it's also 
tough for people like myself. Oh, I love it. <laughs> okay, guys, we have a confession. Oh, boy. We have a confession. And this is so moronic and, like, one pro- it arguably is the funniest thing that's ever happened at, on It Girls. On an It Girls episode. If, uh, here's my... Okay, before... I just want to preface this with saying this. I wish that I would have capitalized on this moment in the moment and it would have been ten times funnier for everyone else listening. And that's... I just dropped yeah. the ball on that. But here we go. Yeah, well, okay. So if you guys listened to the Emily Eman episode last week, which if you haven't, you should. She's just a star in every way. So I'm telling a story in the episode and um, it's about a girl that plays for Nebraska Volleyball. And the girl that plays for well, Nebraska Volleyball... Well, hold on. This girl, she is like probably one of the most popular college volleyball players of all time. Yeah. And she like grew up in the limelight. She committed to Texas, played here at Texas, transferred to Nebraska, has this weird career, and she's still really popular. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So you're just giving a background. Her name is Lexi's yeah. son. Lexi's son. And yeah, she's like super famous. So I'm like telling the story. And if you caught it, I said, Lexi Hill. <laughs> um, and Z did not capitalize on this, but in the moment, I said it. And then I, I was like t- t- continuing to tell the story. And I said, Ashani, did I say Lexi's son? And she said, no. <laughs> well, the funny part is um, that's my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend's name. So. <laughs> Like, it was one of those things, and Emily Eman obviously doesn't know that, but as soon as, like, Z and I, Z texted me during the episode, and she she was like, no, oh, better yet, better yet, Nick was sitting out there, and all of a sudden, Z, all of a sudden Z and I got a text from him saying, she did not just say that, and I was like, Nick, oh. Nick texted Nick texted me and Maddie in the group chat and said, no way she just said that, and he texted me, as soon as it happened, Nick texted me by myself and said, bro, no way. <laughs> <laughs> but, like we were friends it wasn't like i just like know his ex-girlfriend like we know each other right. well so for it wasn't sure. like it was sure. like i like think a lot about her i just it was like lexi hill lexi sonic kind of you know right but we just for had sure. to tell our people sure. we had to tell we had to tell the people what they needed what they needed to know absolutely for sure Oops. okay man what else do you have on the docket for us what else do i have on the docket um so something i want to talk about and I knew you were even mad at that. I was going to bring this up, but it's like it's just it's just too important not to. Travis and Kelsey, Travis and Kelsey, Travis and Taylor. <laughs> you knew it was happen. Did you see it? I sent it to you. I right? didn't. I or didn't did know that was going to happen. No, I saw oh. that. I, I saw all of it. Trust me. Okay, give us thing. the people. Like, wh- where do you stand? Okay. Well, okay. Here we go. I am in no means, by no means, a Swifty. I respect the heck out of taylor swift i love a lot of her songs i think she's an awesome performer best one of the best ever on the flip i am absolutely and utterly obsessed with travis kelsey i think he is just like the best thing since sliced bread personality is a 10 looks is a 10 styles a 10 humor is a 10 i just think he's all around a 10 um it, it Which hurts, is a lot for you to say. Like, you don't really yeah. say guys are tens. No. But, man. So, it hurts me a little bit to see him with someone that's not me. But- <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let's talk about this. She is the only girl that doesn't look like you. That's that's true. He's notoriously dated girls that look like me. And so, it's interesting, you know? And I guess... uh the definition of insanity is doing something over and over again and trying to get a different result. And so maybe he's just trying to combat insanity, um, which I can appreciate and which is why, that's why I love him. So I'm fully invested in it. And I went to go see the Ares, Ares tour in theaters. It was really an experience. Unlike anything, people were like standing up in the theater, clapping and waving their flashlights. It's cult like. <laughs> so all you Swifties out there, it's cult like, and it's a friendly cult, a it gentle is. one, but it's cult like. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm in it and yeah, karma is 
the guy on the Chiefs. The guy on the Chiefs coming home to me. Yeah, damn right, dang right. I mean, um, so I yeah. really, Katie, my sister, you know, is she's like Swifty through and through, and we've talked a lot about it. And sorry if you and I already talked about this, but like I genuinely think they've been together for a while. Yeah. Well, a week after like twitter and instagram and stuff started going crazy he bought a house well I, again you don't know how true this is but he bought a house yeah. so he could be more private you're not buying a house for a week-long relationship and so i right. mean i've i yeah and his know. need for privacy has probably like gone through the roof like i was listening to like um like fm radio the other day and they're like a random station talking about uh, travis and um taylor like i don't know if anyone's not talking about it and jason he's getting crazy media too now yeah, he's got, almost got voted sexiest man alive. Which is Jason crazy. Kelsey? Jason. No, he did not. Yeah, he was a finalist. Okay, people like like the family guy. People like the family guy. People like the lumberjack look. Yeah. Um yeah. I mean I'm I'm I have no problem with it. Patrick yeah. Dempsey won, which is uh, who the is head that? honcho on Grey's Anatomy. He died a oh. long time ago in the show. Yeah! Oh my gosh, yeah, my family loves Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, yeah what was his name? So, what was his name in it? Meredith and, uh, uh... I don't know, I just know they called him Dr. Mick... 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 Mick Steamy? Mick Dreamy? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a that, Grey's girl. That story's been really, um... Tickling my tummy. I've really been, like, enjoying it. Okay, well, while we're on stories, let's just flip the switch real quick to Carissa Thompson. And so I don't know if you guys heard, Matt, I don't know if you've heard, but Krista Thompson is this uh, sports broadcaster, like extremely famous. Her and Aaron Andrews have a podcast called the Calm Down Podcast. It's awesome. And um, the other day she was on a podcast and said something along the lines of like, yeah, a lot of the times, like during halftime, if I don't get to talk to the coaches, like I just make something up and I just report like I just report something that I've made up. And people like started going crazy on her and they're like, making what? jokes about it. Joe Burrow like hurt his wrist um in us uh, Thursday's game and people were like joking like, "Oh, Joe Burrow is a candidate for amputation per reports of Carissa Thompson." Like just <laughs> throwing crazy things out there. And so I'm just curious like I guess like morally and ethically that's not okay to lie, but like if you can't get a hold of a coach like at halftime or if you can't get a hold of a player, you have nothing to report on, like are you just not going to report or are you just going to make something up? Well, okay, I think you need to explain, like, because you've actually seen this firsthand, like, what it looks like to, and you've explained this to me, but, like, I don't really get it. Like, I always thought that, oh, these, they just have to go talk to the reporters. That's not how it works. No, it's not. They don't have to go talk. Like, you'll see videos of, like, the final horn blowing in football games and reporters, like, sprinting, trying to go catch players and catch coaches. And so they're just trying to, like, really grasp for anything they can get. But her explanation, and I guess defense, what she, like, released a statement on her Instagram. Like, it was a big deal. No way! And her explanation was, like, I will make up something based off the facts that I have. So, if I can't get a coach to come on, but they haven't scored in the first half, I'll just say that coach says that they're struggling offensively. Or, like, say something obvious. Which, I guess, checks out. Because what else is the coach going to say? Right. So, I don't know. It's not like she's making up, well, I don't know, I'm, I don't actually know this, but I assume she's not making up, like, super controversial stuff, you know? Like, I feel like, it's actually, I kind of give her some respect, I don't know. Yeah, she's awesome, but. I, I, see, yeah, I'm on the other side, I'm kind of, I would do the same thing. I know you would, that's why I brought it up. Really? <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you think lowly of me, or just that I would do the same thing? No, I just think you would do the same. I think a lot of people would, honestly. Like, it's your job to have something. Right. Right. And I doubt it's I doubt it's an every game thing where she's just making stuff up, but yeah. it's a part of the job and it like enhances viewership or viewer what is the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Like just engagement? Like, not engagement, but like it's better to watch it's like when you're watching a game and the reporter's saying, Oh, the coach said this, player said this, it's like you feel like you're in it. And so I think having that is important and so if you don't have anything, you better find something to have. Right. You're not going to twiddle your thumbs. Right. Dang. You got to be so careful with what you say when you're a celebrity. It's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. You can get beaten up for a lot of stuff. Um. Okay. I have another pop culture story. 
And it's something we're both super excited about. Well, we talked a lot about this week, but um, Janine and Caleb's wedding. <laughs> Does that fall into pop culture? I guess it in a certain pool of people, yeah. Right. You give, um, like, the rundown. You know them. You know them. <laughs> but, I like, don't know them. Not everyone's like, oh, yeah, Janine and Caleb, you know who that is. So maybe you just right. explain. Okay, so... Here's the deal. Janine and Caleb, they're both from Dallas, which is partly why I know of them, but also um, Maddie Pruitt, who a lot of you guys know, Madison Pruitt, she's on The Bachelor, um, Pilot Pete season, one of the worst seasons in all of Bachelor history, I'll say it. He sucked. Um, yeah, so Maddie Pruitt goes on, she leaves the show because it's not her vibe, it's going against can't, a lot of what she believes in. Can't blame warranted, her. But also, I, I question why she ever went on there in the first place. I have a lot of questions about that. Oh, yeah. um, but one of her best friends is named Janine and she's an influencer from Dallas and she's really cool but she got married this weekend to this guy named Caleb and it was kind of like a Dallas wedding of the century yeah. you know like the king and queen type thing but Dallas it was really awesome I um, I tell Maddie this all the time I don't know what it is about Janine that I I'm not, I can't, like, buy fully in on her, but I think Caleb is awesome, so. Like, you're not, like, obsessed with Janine, but you're kind right. of, like, obsessed with Caleb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get mm -hmm. that. I get that. He's really yeah. easy at do, which helps. Yeah, their story's really interesting and cool, and so it was a... Uh... Yeah, and their wedding was really interesting. So they had it on Sunday, which was unique, Z and I thought, but they did... You know what I really liked about the wedding, Z, and I honestly kind of want to do, is they did that bridal brunch. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so cool. It was like Janine and all the girls did this huge like brunch thing before um, the rehearsal dinner. And it just looked like very, it looked cool. I would want to be with my girls on my day. or day So I was watching a podcast that they did like five days before the wedding and they wanted to get married on 11-11, which would have been that Saturday, November 11th, 11-11. Oh. They couldn't, which is why they did 11-12. Oh, so it wasn't like they were trying to marry on a Sunday. No. They just, like, they're kind of, we talked about this, like, they would get married on a Sunday. That's why we weren't that surprised. But, right. yeah, I follow, like, so many influencers that were at that wedding. And they, like, all were, like, getting up the next morning. And they're like, whew, we were up late last night. Like, just weird <laughs> on a Sunday. But, yeah, I just had to talk about it. I, I thought that Janine looked stunning. Stunning. Mm -hmm. um, and he yeah, she was, was gorgeous. He was pretty gorgeous, too, so. <laughs> All right, and I think the last thing that, I think this is really interesting, and I, so there's a lot of things going on about Angel Reese and LSU women's basketball, and we've had Kateri Poole on the show and a lot of speculation, but I think one of the things that's interesting about it is, which I kind of think is the same with Colorado football and Deion Sanders, is, like, mm. once the limelight is on you and you're getting that attention, you're you're not just getting good attention anymore. Like you're no one cared about Colorado football last year. No one cared if they lost five games in a row. Now they've lost five games in a row and it's like the headline have they on really? Sports Center. They have and it's the headline on Sports Center and ESPN. And it's just like if you want that attention, like it's gonna come with the risk. And I think that's so interesting. Same with Angel Reese. Like last year everyone knows her for everything she was doing and the title and now like everyone's only talking about the bad things going on with her. And so I think it's really interesting how that attention can teeter-totter. Oh, man. No, it goes back to what we said about, um, like, Travis and Taylor, too. Oh, no, no, no. What we talked about, like, Krista Thompson, that the, I know what, what you say, but ultimately, like, also what you do, right? Like, Colorado football, he's not trying to lose games. <laughs> right. right. Um, Z, I want to talk about something, but I know it's, like, I don't know. I just want to talk about it, okay? having to do with that story okay so mm -hmm. z sent me um an instagram post like a month or two ago and it was of all of the uh um first team uh all-american pre-season all-americans for women's and men's Remember, you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. and there was only one black woman and one black man right yeah there was like nine total all-americans between I think there was, or maybe there was 11. There was six for the men's and five for the women's. And oh. between both sides, there were 
only two black athletes. And I just think that's really interesting. And honestly, I was telling Maddie, like, that doesn't shock me about women's basketball. I think, um... Kind of shocks like, me it's, about it's, women's basketball. It doesn't. Like, I think, like, some of the best players in the WNBA are, like, Sue Bird and... Yeah. Uh, Van Fair. Sleuth and... Uh, Plum. Plum and Ionescu. And so all these people. And I think even, like, when I played basketball when I was younger, um, we would, like... There's obviously teams that are from different places and so you have an all-white team and they're like all right this team is going to play with fundamentals like this team's going to be really <laughs> fundamental and then you get the black team and it's like and then, be and then this, this team's so athletic and it's one of those things but like i think fundamentals at this level are huge but for the guys side it doesn't surprise me because i think so many of the guys that are really good leave and it's normally like the old, really old guys that True. win player of the year or win all American. And those are the, maybe I don't want to say less athletic, but like the guy, the white guys that aren't going to go to the league in their first year, that are going to stay in college and average 25 points a game for five years. And so I just think it's really interesting. I don't know. I don't yeah. know why that is, but it's cool. That's a really good point. I'm I'm glad you dug into it because I didn't really think about that, like the the men's where they leave early on if they're really good. And you're not yeah, gonna put yeah. like well maybe you will, but you're probably not gonna put a freshman who's supposed to be like the best freshman coming in on the preseason all American because it's just you just can't you just don't know. Yeah. yeah. And I think even like a lot of times with the younger guys, the freshmen the NBA and the teams and the execs on those teams, like, know who's who they're going to draft. Like, unless injury comes into play. Like, a 18-year-old in high school, before he even goes to college, they're like, ah, projected to go lottery pick. So he doesn't have to average 30 points a game. He can average 12 mm. and still go number three in the draft. And so, I think, yeah. I don't know. It's really interesting to think about. I also thought, to take it even a level deeper, like, I was kind of ashamed. Not ashamed. That's not the right word. Like, if I looked at that post, I would never notice that. Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy how much our, how different our, how different our experiences have been yeah. in life. And I think I've come a long way too since being your best friend and like <laughs> just seeing things in a lot different light. But I still am not at the point where like that would even be something I think of until you say something, you know? Yeah. It's interesting. I don't know. I've yeah. learned a lot. I've learned a lot you from have. you. I'm, I'm proud. Today, I ordered sushi for dinner, and I, like, sent her a picture of what I ordered, and she was like, oh, I'm also eating sushi for dinner. And my immediate thought was, like, wow, this girl didn't even know what sushi was four years ago. And I'm not making that up. That's not, like, an exaggeration. I know, you guys. It's so bad. She actually bad. didn't know what it was. You can tell it. It's, yeah. We went to a sushi restaurant, and she asked the waiter, can I just have sushi? Like, she thought it was, like, a one kind of dish, like, lasagna, or, like... No, 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 I, I thought it was a type of fish. Like, I thought it was, like, salmon, shrimp, sushi. Yeah, and the waiter was like, yeah, uh, we have 37 trillion rolls. Which one can I get you? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, so Matt's come yeah. a long way. Just like we all have. Yeah, honestly, I mean, there's no doubt about that. But something that I've been thinking a lot about, um, and it's actually, I haven't even talk to you about the Z, but, um, like I've been thinking a lot about like where I want to like raise my family and we're just kind of getting into it. But, um, like I'm kind of at the point where like I have a normal job. I have a really long-term boyfriend. I, I, I know what I want to do. And it's like now like, okay, but where do I want to do that? And just being real, like I'm trying to figure out like, you know, do I move back to my hometown? Do I stay where I'm at, which is like 45 minutes away? Do I, move to Chicago, like for career opportunities and just trying to juggle all these things and figure out like what makes the most sense. And Z, something I've been thinking a lot about is how like growing up in Burlington was the best thing ever for so many reasons. But like I had zero diversity mm. and if I choose to raise my kids there, I'm choosing to give them that same experience. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a really mature thought of you. I would, I guess we're like in different, we're in different seasons in our lives in the same way, but like in different ways. Yeah. So I like have no reason to really be thinking about that, but that's an interesting, mature thought. Thanks. Yeah. But but honestly, it's something like when I got to school, I, I didn't 
I'll, I'm just going to be so blunt. Is that fine? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I didn't understand how black girl's hair worked. Like I used to ask really bad questions and I didn't even know they were bad. Like I did not know. Um, and I, that's just like one example. I, I didn't know anything. And, um, I didn't know food. Like obviously sushi is a great example. Like I'd never eaten sushi till, till then. Um, I'd never seen the ocean until college. <laughs> like there's so many things that I just, I lived in such a bubble. And, um, so that does scare me. Yeah. I think you'll do a great job raising your kids regardless. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. But I also think like my parents did such an amazing job in so many ways, but we didn't travel a lot. Like we really only traveled for like volleyball. So, you know, God willing, I hope that that's an experience I can give my kids and maybe help them learn different things about the world and see it's like way bigger than Burlington. Yeah, it's really, it's crazy how, like, I was telling some in our locker room today, and um, we were talking about like, group projects, and one of our girls on our team was like, this guy on my project is just, like, absolutely no help, like, he's, and he's, I was like, it's really crazy when you get to college, you, like, realize the spectrum, like, how big the spectrum is of, like, how smart some people really are, and, like, how not smart some people really can be, and, like, really how differently everyone was just raised, and, like, Maddie, like, never saw the ocean, like, didn't know, like, very many black people. Like, I have, like, met every ethnicity and person ever, like, by the time I was, like, 10. Like, I've been to, like, 40 of the 50 states. Like, I just, like, it's really crazy. And neither one is for worse or for better. Like, yeah. I mean, if we're, like, talking statistics, like, it worked out better for Maddie at this point. <laughs> so, Wait, Why? <laughs> I mean, you've got a full-time job in an apartment <laughs> and a boyfriend. And- I was like, what are, what metrics are you using? Oh my gosh, that's funny. So, yeah. What's up, sports fans? It's former NFL wide receiver Stevie Johnson. The wait is finally over. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is now live in Kentucky. And new customers can get in on the action when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash Mercury. Finally, you can bet on your favorite sports, from the money line to point spreads to player props and more. This means you'll be able to place all kinds of bets, even live bets. Say you just have a feeling your favorite wide receiver in college football is going to get loose in the final minutes. Go ahead and live bet for him to score on the next drive. I promise you won't regret it. So start betting now on the app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Visit FanDuel.com slash Mercury and make every moment more. Must be 21 and up in President Kentucky. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets, which expires seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fan Duel.com. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler. Yeah, I don't know. I've I, and also like I think about. Yeah, they are kind of. These are not like guys. I'm not trying to have kids for like you know five or six years, but it's just things I, I think about a lot. About not by myself. And another thing is like the education piece. Like if they go to Burlington where I went to school, it's just like you know I, I can't even give them other options. Like there is no other option. <laughs> like they're going to Burlington, like they're going to like it. And like, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's a, it's a lot to think about. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know either. That's interesting. Deep. I know you had a question about, uh, I do. I do. Well, I best that. advice, not a best advice, but yeah, you tell me what it is. No, 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 no. We're not doing that one first. I have one more. Okay. Go ahead. I have a few more. Um, what's challenging you? Lately, what is what's something that's just been like on your heart, on your mind? Um, maybe it's stirring up some, some anxiety. What's been challenging you? And be open. <laughs> She's giving me these looks with her eyes, guys, that you guys might not be able to tell, but I can tell. When she said be open just now, yeah. Um, I know I've talked to her about this, but I right now I am um, – doing a lot of things that I really love to do. So I love to play volleyball. We're a really awesome point in the season where it's just like, we're not practicing a whole lot. We're just playing. And that's like the best part of the season. We're just playing, you're playing, you're playing. And then I'm an intern for FCA. And that's like pretty much the same every week, but it's just like, I kind of do a lot and do a lot throughout the week with that, which I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite things. 
And then I'm doing it girls. And another thing that we've kind of like Maddie mentioned at the beginning of the episode, like we're trying to do a lot more and kind of grow this thing through the roof. And so that's required a lot for me. And then I'm in school, which I like, I hate school, but I mean, it's whatever. So I like have like four full-time jobs, what feels like. And, um, between all of that, I'm trying to incorporate, like, seeing this person I haven't seen in a long time, doing this, having this conversation, watching this TV show, getting dinner with this person. And so I really feel like God's telling me right now, like, yo, you need to rest. Like, you can say no. to It's okay to, like, miss out on things. And just, like, making sure that I'm, like, filling myself before pouring myself out to everyone has been really important to me. And so something that only the last couple weeks I've kind of realized, like, dude, you're exhausted. And like I said, like, it's nothing like, I don't want to cut any of those four things out. Well, I can't wait to graduate in like, six, <laughs> like, in, like in like 25 days. I can't wait to graduate. <laughs> Counting, it down. Great. Counting it down. But like of the things besides that, like, I don't want to cut a single thing out, but figuring out, um, one thing. Okay. So I meet with, um, this friend of mine every week. And right now we're like going through this program of like, how are you leading yourself? And, there's this, um, hold on guys. I have to just grab the sheet of paper cause that's going to be helpful to me. Yeah, it's good. Um, so there's like this triangle offense in your life and in Mark, uh, one 29 through 39, like Jesus is like healing people and he's preaching and then he goes and like has quiet time. And this triangle offense is like action. And it's like where our talents touch the world, quiet, like personal time alone with God and then play, which is recreation and like, just like living and just like finding a balance between like my action and like my talents. Like that's kind of volleyball. And like my quiet time is like where I'm feeling myself and play and like, just like living and having fun has been really important in these last few weeks. And so it's challenging, but it's a good challenge to have. I'd rather have that challenge than, a lot of other things. And then I am figuring out what December 16th and so on is going to look like. And so, no, yeah. actually not the 16th. I'm going to say the 17th. We're going to be playing on December 17th on ABC. So tune into that. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah, I'm excited for the episode where we can talk about what's next for you. But, like, Z doesn't really know what's next. So, like, I, I think yeah, you're, you're doing the right things and getting in the right headspace for, for whatever is next for you. Oh. What's challenging you, sis? Um, yeah, you thought you were getting out of that, huh? No, no, no. I didn't. My issue with even answering this question is, um, like, I've always taken pride in not complaining. Mm-hmm. And I think anyone on any team I've ever played on would agree with that. However, this job that I work is unlike anything that I have ever known (laughs) which says a lot because like playing a college sport anyone that's done it knows like it's it's a you know it's a 24 7 job it's something that's always on your mind but it's also something that I hope you love and you like look forward to on most days right not every day some days are gonna suck but like most days I looked forward to at least being with those people um and so I'm just like struggling with this job I'm in right now it's it's not necessarily something that like highlights um, what I'm best at. And so I'm trying to figure out how I can still stay on fire throughout my day when I work, re- when I work a lot, I work a lot, a lot. And so I'm trying to just figure out like, what are things I can look forward to when I quite frankly, like don't talk to someone for 12 hours. <laughs> like, Anyone that knows me knows, like, that is really hard mm-hmm. on my mental. Yeah, um, I like to talk. And I like to listen. Like, I just love relationships. And it's it's just been hard. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that vulnerability. Thanks. It's good. it's good. You needed to say that because I don't think you've said that out loud to a lot of people before. I know. Because again, like I am so, I'm like uber positive. I, I've said it's like three people this week. I was like, I've really, I'm struggling with this job. And they are like, we've never heard you say that. And I'm like, I know. I just, 
it's fine. I'm learning. I'm learning a lot. That is for sure. I'm learning so much and I love learning more than anything, but I just, I need, I need something where I can be on fire. Just passionate. Hey girls. Hey girls. Hey girls. Hey girls. Hey girls. Um, I have a, a quick one, a quick, a, a quickie. Um, I need you to I name, I know, you know, I didn't mean to say that. I need you to name your top five Thanksgiving foods in order. Go. Oof, sweet potato casserole, pecan pie, sweet potato pie, mac and cheese. Uh, mashed potatoes. That was the most Southern response I've ever heard. <laughs> we, don't have, we do the only out of those five. The only one that we have in my Thanksgiving is mashed potatoes. That's so funny. Like I have never had any sweet potato in any variety at any Thanksgiving ever. That's wild to me. Until like Kentucky. Yeah. Is that Southern? Or like, have you ever had candied yams? Oh, oh no, I have it. But no, oh, I have not Wait, how do you, what is it? Like brown sugar? I would make those. Yeah, I'll have Latasha send you the recipe. It'll change your life, really, is what it'll do. Okay. Also, I'm a sucker for cranberry sauce. <laughs> That's so <laughs> weird. I love cranberry sauce. Wait, pecan oh. pie sounds nuts, though. I, I, it is really good. I've had it. I wish I we had it at ours. All time. Yeah. I, yeah. My mom almost made it when she came down last weekend. It's, I don't know if insane. there's... I don't know if there's any pie that like holds it. Well, I think apple pie is pretty, pretty good too. Yeah. Like I've never had an apple pie at Thanksgiving. So I listened to this on the radio. When you think of apple pie, like when do you think about eating it then? In the fall for sure. I think most pies is fall, fall food. Yeah. I don't think. Well, this guy, pie. this guy on the radio was saying that he thinks of apple pie as like a late summer. Huh. Because it's apple season. Like and July 4th. Yes, that's what he said. He said like July, August, like Labor Day weekend, apple pie. That's interesting. It's a weird take. Yeah. I think so. I think it's a weird take. But then she said that apple pie is her favorite pie on Thanksgiving, and I agree. Hmm. Yeah, no, I've never had apple pie on Thanksgiving, but I'm here for it. I love I love a pie situation. I'm a sucker for like anything bread-like. So like, you know, Not like crunchy. Cake. Not crunchy. I don't like crunchy things, but like cake, uh, pie, like cinnamon rolls, like the crust, like banana pudding that has like a bunch of oh. the wafers in it. Like anything like that, like put it in my mouth. I'm going to finish it. And so I can get down with any kind of pie, really. That's good. That's your choice. Do you want to ask me? Yeah, go ahead. Top five. Well, in order. I have like an annoying answer. Thanksgiving is like Thanksgiving food's not really my jam. <laughs> it's not I, guys for thanksgiving she wants to eat um uh, quinoa and you act like anyone seeds, likes quinoa Jeez. and cacao nibs and a sparkling glass of water you're so annoying no but i did ask my mom if i could bring a salad to thanksgiving this year she said yes no you know what she said actually this is her quote my mom said well are you doing it to be nice or because you don't like the food <laughs> you should tell the story of what Barb told you when you asked if you could only get two big Christmas gifts this year. You guys. All right. We don't talk enough about our moms on here. Winning woman, but they can be crazy. Well, mine. Um, so I there's only like two things I want for Christmas. They're both like pricey. So I, I just was like texted her. I said, Mom, how about you just give me two big gifts for Christmas? I'm 23, like, or 22. Like, I don't need, like, se like 17 presents, which you guys, like, literally, she's, like, Santa still comes, and we each get, like, 16 presents wrapped. But, like, you, like, my my mom just, like, likes having us open presents. Like, we could have, like, one sock in a box. Like, one sock, the other sock in another box. Like, she just, like, loves us opening presents. And she's always been psychotic about the number of presents. So, like, each kid must get the same. So... I texted her that, knowing there's not a good chance. And she responded, no, sorry. I like to do what I like to do. Please don't ruin Christmas for me. <laughs> period. <laughs> period. Period. Literally, period. Um, so, anyways, I'll be getting a couple socks and boxes. Just kidding. She gets me unbelievable gifts, and I don't need anything, but 
I was I was laughing at that for sure. That's good. Yeah. Um, Z, I want you to wrap up the episode by telling me because Z and I talked before, and we of course want to end it with our best piece of advice. But if we're gonna do this periodically, it doesn't really make sense to do our best piece of advice because, like, we can't give the same piece every month. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. So. So. so Instead, rather, we're going to do um, something a little different. So, Johnny, what is the piece of advice that's moving you the most right now? Mm, so, it's um, at FCA Huddle a couple weeks ago, we had these um, this couple come. And the guy, the husband in the couple, is one of our intern strength coaches here at UK. And he worked with us all summer. And his wife was there, and they met at FCA Leadership Camp. Their story is really awesome. But... Um, one of the things that he said before they even said anything was um, the uh, one thing he wanted us to remember was to love deeply and hold loosely. And he was just saying like, love the heck out of your people and what you do, but like also understand that like at any given time, like something can change and you might not have what you have today, tomorrow. So hold on to things loosely, but while you're doing it, just like love the heck out of your people. And that is like the epitome of what I'm in right now. Like I, I keep talking about this, but like <laughs> coming to a close and like holding on to these last few minutes, like really loosely, but loving the heck out of people that I'm doing it with. And so I really love that. And I think to like, to help you guys understand why he said that he, um, his wife, which was his girlfriend at this point, they were like 20, 22 and 23, um, five months into dating. They were doing long distance. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. And um, he dropped everything and moved into her parents' basement so she could help take care of him. Well, five months into dating. And so he was just saying, like, yeah, hold hold loosely, but love deeply. And I think that's really awesome. That's really good. That's really good. Wow. I love that. Mine's, like, nowhere near as wholesome. Um, And I don't even remember the whole quote. So it's just such a letdown. I wish you would have ended that. Um, So I, I, when I work late, I sit in my living room and I watch... Hallmark movies lately because okay because I talked to Z about this like I work really late at night and I like you need something on the TV that's not gonna like um make you pay attention but it's also not gonna like make you fall asleep so I was watching Selling Sunset and it's just that is not filling your cup <laughs> it used to it used to fill my cup and now it's just straight up drama. they're not even selling houses anymore they're just well, gossiping no, I used to love, like, watching the houses they'd walk through because they were absurd. But now it's just them ye- yelling. So, anyways, I've been watching Hallmark movies because that is something that's, like, it's great. Hallmark movies are really good around Christmas time. And there was this one movie, and it's just, like, the cheesiest Hallmark movie. But, and they're all, like, the same plot, you know? Like, small town girl moves to the big city, like, tries to find love, ends up moving back and finding her high school. Whatever. So, I guess that. Yeah. And this girl um, kept saying this quote over and over, and she kept saying, um, you need to... (laughs) I don't remember the first part, and I was like, I need to, like, rewind and write it down. But basically, it's along the lines of, like, you need to move away to find out where you belong. And Expand. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. Well, so, it's what I've been struggling with, you guys. I already kind of talked about it, but I trying to figure out where I want to live and where I want to work. Um, and I was like, so anti like move back home for the longest. I just never pictured myself back at home. And lately I've been like being pulled to like, just stay close and be with my people. And so it just like really hit me. I was like, maybe that's what I needed to hear. Yeah. That's good stuff. Shout out Hallmark. Wow. Shout out Hallmark. Yep. I did. It took it, but I couldn't even remember the beginning. So it must have not been that impactful, but the ending was. Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. <laughs> ah, Johnny, episode number one in the books. This is not our first solo episode. We did a whole like two hour one in your apartment. Yeah, I know. I know. That ago. one was different. That one was different. But guys, we are so happy to have you all. Um, we love you all. We are really excited about where it girls is going, but, um, in order to do so, we need, we need your help. Um, you know, 
show love to our Instagram, show love to our Twitter, show love to our TikTok. Um, but also give us a five star review. Facts. Five star review. Five star review. Um, Z, we should do like a giveaway for five star reviews. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll think on it. But um, we love you guys and have a great week. Peace, love, blessings, guys. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.